In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I want to take a few moments this morning to focus on the gospel reading which you just heard read. And the reason I want to do it is so often it is misunderstood. So many of us read this gospel to think that it's speaking about those other people that are rich. You and I are rich according to this gospel. So this gospel speaks to us and to our heart and to our mind. It is not about just those who have tremendous wealth, but it is every one of us that has possessions. And in no way does this gospel condemn those who are wealthy, but rather it condemns those of us who are controlled by our wealth, who are controlled by our possessions, that our possessions come before God, that our possessions come before our relationships with one another. For you and I, these can be very simple questions. When I make a choice on Sunday, what drives my decision? Am I driven to the mountains because I love skiing more than God? Am I driven to another place because it is more fun? Is my money more important than my relationships with one another? What are the choices that each of us make in terms of the wealth that God has given us? How do we raise our children? Do we raise our children to love God or do we shower our wealth so much upon them that they are blinded to the presence of the living God because they never enter into his temple and everything else comes before God? This is what this gospel is speaking about. Because when our Lord says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved, he is talking about that gateway in Jerusalem in which the only way you could get a camel through that gateway called the eye of the needle was to unburden it, was to take off everything that was on that camel so that the camel himself could enter unburdened through that gate. And you and I are called to enter into those doors, unburdened from the worries of this world. When the priest stands before the altar, before the consecration of the gifts, he says, let us lay aside all earthly care that we may receive the King of glory. It is only when we let go of all of those things and that they become secondary to God and to our relationships and to our care for one another are we then able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. God places a test before every one of us. Think of how we each act. When you get a letter from the church asking for your contributions, as you just did. How painful is it for you to write a check or to call in your credit card or go online? How much do we want to hold on to those possessions because we think they're ours? I assure you they are not. And I assure you that when we cheat God and we cheat one another, God has his way of evening things out. We are called to take what God has blessed us with and to use it for good. Like the rich man in the gospel who desired to justify himself before Christ. And he said, I have followed all of these commandments, all of these laws, all the days of my life since my childhood. But then our Lord looks at him and he says, but you lack one thing, because our Lord knew that the possessions which he had were in the way of his salvation. His wealth, his money, his possessions 
were controlling how he behaved and how he treated others. Perhaps he gave money but with strings, like some of us. Some of us who do not think of ourselves as rich give a dime and we expect tenfold back. Some of us who have been blessed by God think that we need not give. Some of us who in fact are poor still think we are not expected to give. The scripture is clear. Every one of us is expected to give of what we have. The scripture says 10%. If this church received one or 2%, we wouldn't have to ask you for anything. So I urge you to listen to the words of the gospel. It condemns not only the wealthy, it condemns all of us who hang on to our possessions and think somehow or another they're ours and we're going to take them with us. I've done thousands of funerals in my 43 years of priesthood. I've yet to see a single dime go with the dead into the grave other than their very expensive caskets which decay and rot in the ground. What God has given us, he has given for us to share with one another. He has given to us to spread the good news. He has given it to us to do good and not to fulfill every desire we have for ourselves because in the end that will kill us. So may our hearts and our minds be opened. Every one of us is called to unburden ourselves from our wealth and to use it for good, even if it means giving one dollar. Because if we have 10, we're expected to give one. So no matter how poor, no matter how rich, this gospel is for every one of us. May we unburden ourselves from our possessions, not that we have to live in poverty, but that we understand that our wealth is to do good, and our wealth is to uplift the other, and our wealth is to share the gospel to all who come across our path. May God give us the courage, unlike this wealthy man in the gospel who went away so sad because his possessions were far more important to him than following Christ. Let us find the great joy in our Lord's words that it is better to give than it is to receive. Amen.